Okay. <laughs> Hello, dear friends. Good evening. Such a beautiful, beautiful evening. Let's uh, try this. Jason and uh, the Argonauts. Let's see if we can finish it. Oracle, priest or priestess through whom a god or goddess speaks. Palia, king of Ilocos, a city in ancient Greece. Era, goddess of marriage, known for her jealousy. Poseidon. Jason, nephew of King Pelia, became captain of the Argo. Argos, builder of the ship Argo. Argonauts, the Argos crew. Zetes and Gales, winged brothers. Phineas. King of Salmidesus, Salmidesus, who was blind and could see the future. Hapis, winged female creature. Aetis, king of Kol. Cheese, cold keys, and keeper of the golden fleece. Aphrodite, Aphrodite, goddess of love. Media, sorcière, sorceress, sorcière, daughter of Aetis. Cold keys. Kolkis Kolkis on the ancient region at the eastern end of the Black Sea. Eo Eolkos Ancient City in Central East Mount Olympus Sacrifice. <coughs> the oracle warned King Pelia of Iolcos, Eol beware of the man with one sandal. There is a man with one sandal. You should be beware of the man. With one sandal. Pelia knew he hadn't been a good king. He'd stolen the okay, throne. Let's continue. Pelia knew he didn't. Uh, he hadn't been a good king. He'd stolen the throne from his half-brother and he often ignored the gods, especially Era, Hera, Era. But uh, to beware of a man with one sandal, the king laughed. Who would wear only one sandal? The king began preparing a sacrifice for Poseidon. Poseidon is the god of the sea uh, with a trident, right? The god of the sea. Eha, Era. Era is... Uh, Eha is... Uh, is uh, the 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 goddess of marriage. Eha was furious 
when she heard the king gave offerings to Poseidon, but not to her. How dare! Pelia, what did you do? You give offering to Poseidon and not to give Era? You are in trouble. He knew he must destroy King Pelia. And she had an idea. <laughs> you are doing something fishy with me. Don't do anything fishy with a lady. <laughs> Far from the palace, the king's nephew, Jason, was sleeping. Oh, you cannot see, sorry. Eha leaned over him and whispered in his ear, The throne is rightfully yours. The throne is yours. When Jason woke, he was angry. The throne, the throne was his. He set off on the long journey to King Pelias' palace. When Jason reached the river Ana Anaurus, Anaurus, he saw an old woman begging to be carried across. I will carry you, Jason offered. He lifted the woman onto his back. She looked light, an old woman, but she was heavy, very heavy, so, so, so very heavy. Halfway across the river, Jason stumbled and fell. When he stood up, the old woman was gone, and so was his sandal. Oh, oh. Above, so was his sandal, not sandals. So was his sandal. Above him, the goddess Eha giggled. She shook herself out of the old woman's disguise, holding the sandal in her hand. <laughs> so, Eha disguised herself and changed into, uh, into an old woman, let Jason carry her to go across the river, and uh, Jason offered to carry her over the river and the old woman was looked very light but was very 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 heavy so jason fell down in the water and lost one sandal king palia of yolokos yol yol yolkos was sitting on his throne admiring his riches when his nephew Jason appeared. So he was admires his riches. He was just enjoying his beautiful life, very, uh, very successful life. And then his nephew Jason appeared. The king stood to greet him then saw that Jason wore only one sandal. Jason, King Pelia saw Jason. Jason wore only one pedal. Oh, oh, something wrong. He stared at Jason thoughtfully. What would, what would you do if you knew someone meant to harm you, he asked. What would you do if someone wanted to harm you? Jason squalled at the king. What sort of greeting is this? 
I'd send him to fetch the golden fleece, he answered, surprising himself. Why did I answer this? He did not realize that Eha, invisible, was again whispering in his ear. So he was saying something he did not even want to say. King Pelia smiled. The golden fleece. He'd heard much about, he had already heard much about the fleece. It was the pure gold coat of a magical ram. Pure gold coat. Uh oh, here. Pure gold coat of a magical ram. It hung in cloakies, a faraway land, and was guarded by a dragon that paced, snarled, and never sleep. Come to think of it, I have always wanted the golden fleece, Pelia answered. I command you to fetch it for me. I want this. You go get it for me. <laughs> Jason knew. I think these are the Argonauts. Jason knew there was no point in arguing. If I get the golden fleece, you will hand over the throne. Demanded. Pelia nodded. I will, he agreed. But he knew there was no way Jason would succeed at such an impossible task. I can answer you because you cannot do it anyway. Jason called upon the shipbuilder Argos to build him a ship. He named it the Argo. Then he gathered 50 of the strongest and bravest men in Greece to sail to Clochis with him. So he got one, two, three, he got this. One, two, Fifty of the strongest and bravest men. Among them were fighters, sailors, athletes, Olympian athletes, no, 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 I'm kidding, the musicians, and even the flying brothers, Zetes and Gales. Jason and his men, called the Argonauts, set sail under a bright sun, the quest for the golden fleece had begun. So, yeah, this must be uh, Zetis and Kales. Oh, yeah, Jason, Zetis and Kales, and the 50 Argonauts, and they were on the boat, and they are, they are on their way to get uh, the golden fleets. Ooh la la, look at it. Jason and the Argonauts sailed for many years in search of cloakies, stopping at places for food and rest. Each place held a new adventure, but as the ship sailed further from home, Jason worried they'd never find Clochis. Oh my goodness, they search, they sail, and they go and go and go and go, and they could never find it. So Jason was a little bit worried. Yeah. Let's see if Jason has a problem of anxiety. Okay. Jason and the Argonauts sailed on 
they sailed on and on and on until landing at、uh, Sarmidesus, Sarmidesus, where a blind, starved king named Phineas greeted him. Ooh, he met a king. His name is Phineas. Phineas. Gruesome winged creatures hovered above the king, licking their lips. Oh wow! This, oh la la la! Look at it. Those vicious harpies steal my food every time I sit down to eat. Phineas mourned. We will rid you of the harpies, Jason promised. If you tell us the way to Colchis. To Colchis. So Jason fight the eagles because、uh, hmm, there was an old king who was eating, and、uh, the, the 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 eagles always、uh, harpies always stole.、Hmm? This is happy. This oh is this Jason? Why is he two sandals? We will read you of the when Phineas, when Phineas agreed, Zetes and Calais, the winged brothers, flew quickly into the sky. Oh, this is Zetes and、uh, yeah, this is not Jason. This is Zetes and、uh, Calais. The winged brothers quickly flew into the sky. They chased. The harpies, so far away, they'd never return. They chased the harpies away. They didn't kill. They just、uh, chased it away. Oh, the boat! This must be Jason. Phineas told Jason the way to Colchis. To Colchis. But warned of the clashing rocks, the giant cliffs crashed together and destroyed many ship. Destroyed any ship that tried to pass through. Release a dove, Phineas told him, and if it returns unharmed, the passage is open. If not, you must turn back. Oh, Phineas told him a a trick. You have to have a a, a dove. You release a dove. If the dove passes through, that if the dove passes through, you are okay. If not, hmm, you must turn back. Jason and the Argonauts sailed on. And soon they heard the thunderous clash of the rocks. Fog hung like thick drapes over the cliff. Jason released a dove high into the air. Then he waited. At last, the dove returned, and Jason and the Argo. Sailed through the cliffs to Colchis.、Oh, the dove returned. There is an opening. So their boat. This must be a pastel. Oh, I love this pastel painting. This looks very much like pastel. Aetes, the king of Colchis, was not pleased when he heard of strangers' arrival. He knew there was only one reason anyone would travel so far to capture the golden fleece. This is Aetes. 
this must be a uh, Jason. Mm. The king frowned when Jason present presented himself. I will not allow you to take my fleece, he told Jason, unless you earn it. How will I do that? How can I earn it? asked Jason. The king pointed outdoors. In the courtyard, two enormous bulls kicked and bucked. Flames sprayed, sprayed from their mouths. Oh, Juan Yu, there are two bulls. The bull fight. Hmm? Bully. Hmm? Oh, yeah, it must be from here. You must harness these bulls and attach a blow to them without getting burned, the king said. Jason nodded bravely, but inside he shivered. Yeah, I will do it. Then you will plow until you uncover the magical dragon's mouth buried in the courtyard, the king continued. Then you will plow until you uncover there is a, a dragon uh, uncover the dra the magical dragon's tooth buried yeah you will plow and find a magical tooth oh my goodness in <laughs> buddhism the tooth is also shulizi mm, one of the most important mm. jason nodded again watching the kicking bulls breathing fa fire at him. How will I ever make it out of Kolkis alive? He wondered. Oh my goodness. The fire bulls and I need to fight them and I need to find a, tease, a, a tooth. This is too much for me. Oh, look at this young lady. Okay. The goddess Eha had been hiding behind the curtains, watching Ki Aetis speak to Jason. He knew Jason needed help. She flew away and called upon Aphrodite, the goddess of love. Oh, this might be. So this must be Hera, this must be Aphrodite. Oh, I'm a little bit confused. Anyway, mm. Aphrodite followed Eha to Colchis as the two... You want to see a little bit better. As the two goddess hovered over the land, Aphrodite saw a young woman walking along the river towards the palace. Aphrodite swooped closer to watch her. Oh, this is Hera, Aphrodite, and a young lady. Mm, this is a young lady. The young woman was Medea. Ah, this is Medea. The king's daughter, Aphrodite, smiled and aimed her bow, shooting an arrow of love into Medea's heart. Ah, so this is uh, Aphrodite. This should be Cupid, the job, the job of Cupid. Mm. At that moment, Media turned and looked at the palace. She saw Jason standing at the window, feeling of love pulsed through her heart. Oh, she got she got the arrow of love. Media knew that her father had in store. Media knew what her father had in store for him. If she didn't help Jason, 
he would surely die. <gasps> so Media was uh, Pelias' daughter, and this is Jason. And and uh, Media knew that Jason was in trouble. The king will kill him, and well, we'll have a, a way to kill him. So, uh, media wanted to help. Sorry. Mm, look at this. Mm -hmm. Okay. That night, media sent messengers who, who told Jason to meet her by the river. As she watched him approach, she felt a stirring of love all over again. Oh. I can help you harness the bull, she told him. You? He asked with a laugh. How? Don't laugh, Media said. I am also a sorcier, sorceress. She held out a small veal. Rub this potion on your body, shield and sword. It will keep the fire from burning you. So this magic body, this magic thing on your body, on your sword, on your shield, everything. And and what of Jason's uh, uh, dragon's tools? Jason wanted to know. When you dig up the, tru the tools, armed men will spring from the ground. Media answered, throw stone at them. They will become confused and attack each other instead. So you will fight the bull and also when you dig for the tools there will be soldiers boom, 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 popping up and you will what did you do? You will throw stone at them and those soldiers will become confused and fight each other. What can I give you in return? You are helping me so much. Media smiled. You will take me as your wife. Oh, see, ancient Greece, the women are really powerful. They can decide their life. That is so cool. Yeah. In many cultures, it's all arranged marriage. But, uh, the, 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 not me too, the, 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 the woman's independent, yeah, started, the, the empowering, woman empowering started very, very long time ago. If I succeed, I will marry you, of course. That is a good deal. You are such a beautiful woman. Yeah. <laughs> That's too. That's all what I want to tell you the truth. <laughs> the next day, all the people of Kolkis gathered to watch the spectacle. In his room, Jason rubbed Media's potion all over his body sword and shield. He filled a small bag with stones. Yeah, he did everything as as media told him. Then he strolled out into the courtyard. He waved at the crowd, the king and media. The king and media. Oh, media is not Pelias' daughter, is uh, Phineas, Phineas' daughter. As the bull neared, Jason pretended to dodge the flame. The crowd cheered.
Then he marched straight towards the bulls and began dancing in the fire. The heat didn't bother him because he had this magical potion to shield him. The people were amazed at Jason's bravery. Their cheers grow louder and louder. Yeah, good guy, good guy. Yeah. Oh, he got the dragon's tools. Only King Eighty sat silent. Oh, this is King. Is um, Media is the daughter of King Eighty. Eighty sat silent and angry. Next to him, Media covered her smile. See, this is the king, Eighty, and Media was happy. Ooh, 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 ooh. I gotcha! I got this! The bull grunted and kicked, confused. Confused as Jason looped Harness, harnesses over his head, over their head. Yeah, he put a harness over their head. King Eighty grew angrier still, but he won't be prepared for the armed man he sought, consoling himself. Mm. <laughs> he did one thing, but I have other tricks. See if he can do it. Jason led the bulls around the courtyard. The plow, the plow dug deep into the earth. The bulls will plow. He put a harness so the bull will plow, right? Jason led the bulls around the courtyard. The plow dug deep into the earth. When he heard a clunk as the plow hit the dragon's tools, he uncovered the tools and lifted it from the ground, holding it up for the crowd to see. But he kept one hand on the, ba on the back filled with stone. So he had one hand holding this dragon's tea dragon's tools and another hand holding the, the stones. Dozens of armed men suddenly sprang from the ground, their, arm, their armor and weapon full of soil. Jason hurled, Jason hurled one stone, then another and another. So Jason got those stones and those Soldiers just boom, 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 jumping out of uh, the ground. How can this be? Well, this is a, a mythology. This is a myth story. So just believe it. The man stopped, confused. Why did you throw a stone at me? One man shouted to another. Oh, these men, they are quite uh, not smart. They say... Why do you throw stone at me? Actually, it's Jason who is throwing, but they did not, maybe they do not have eyes, right? Mm. All the armed men started shouting and charging towards each other. Jason leaped out of the way to let them fight. Ooh, 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 ooh. So Jason was the instigator, and then he just jumped. Out. Mm. Oh, the golden fleece. Okay. With the fighters occupied, Jason strode towards the surprised and angry king. I have done what you wished, he said. Now you must give me what I wanted. The golden fleece. Never, cried king. I did. Never. Media cried in agreement. But, oh my goodness, 
Media cried in agreement. Never give him a golden fleece. But as Jason turned away, she whispered, Meet me near the fleece. Hurry. Oh, Media was just uh, tricking tricking his dad because he did not want, she did not want his dad knew that she was helping. The fleas hung shimmering and golden from the tree. See, the fleas hung shimmering and golden from the tree. A dragon larger than the argo itself paced around the fleas, hissing and speeding. <laughs> yeah. So, a huge tree. We cannot see the proportion. It's so much, much bigger than the Argo. Yeah. How will I find out the gigantic dragon? Jason wondered. Media laughed. I am a, a sorcier. Remember? Je suis la sorcière, she said. I am a sorcerer. She said she began chanting and the dragon calmed. Anyway. Do not know. Mm. Media stepped forward and sprinkled a potion over its eyes. The dragon dropped off to sleep. Now you know what potion is, right? Media has a potion, and that potion is Haying's whisper, Haying's reading stories. Okay. Whenever you listen to the story, your eye, your eyelid becomes so, 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 so very heavy. Me too. So heavy, I cannot open my eyes. Jason quickly gathered up the golden fleece. He and Media run towards the ship where the Argonauts wait. Oars already. King Aeti and his men followed the Argo, but their ship weren't fast enough. Jason and the Argonauts sailed into the horizon. So he got it. And he sailed away, and the king uh, followed him. And run, 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 run. Hmm. So Argonauts sailed into the horizon, horizon bound for Iolcos. Jason thought he would soon become king. Mm, Jason was so happy. Oh, I am going to be the king. When Jason returned to Ilocos, he marched straight to King Pelias' palace. When Pelias saw, saw Jason, he paled. He hadn't expected Jason to return, especially not with the golden fleece. I am king now, said Jason. Never, cried the king. Be gone with him. Peleus God forced Jason out of the palace and warned him, warned him, never, ever come back again. We she learned the king uh, when she learned what the king had said, Media was angry. You see, she was so angry. She was furious. 
She wanted Jason to be king and herself to be the queen. She warned she would make Pelia pay. Oh my goodness. When you get a, a woman angry, uh -huh, you are going to pay. Media told Pelia's daughter that she had a potion to make their old father young and strong again. But first, they had to slice him into pieces. Oh, wow. She demonstrated by sprinkling potion on a piece of old ram. On the pieces of an old ram which immediately sprang to life, young and beautiful. So, this is, a, this is an old ram, and you slice it, and it becomes young and beautiful. The princess chopped up their father. Oh my goodness, the princesses chopped up their father. But after he was in pieces, Media threw away the potion and left Pelia for dead. That is kind of, you know, you are paying too much price for being a queen. That is not nice. I don't think. Now no one stood between Jason and the throne. But media didn't foresee the anger of the frightened people of Ilorcos as punishment for the murder. They forced Jason and Media to leave the country, warning them never to return. Yeah. They let uh, the daughter to kill their father. Yeah. People were angry. Jason's... Uh, they want Jason and Media to leave the country Warn them never to return. Jason would never become king. Jason's quest wasn't fulfilled as he had planned. But there was one who was quite pleased with the turn of events. From high above the clouds on Mount Olympus, the goddess Eha smiled. Pelia had received the ultimate punishment for ignoring her. Eha had gotten her revenge. Jason and Media left the country. Beware of the man with one sandal. The oracle, please. Pelia knew it hadn't 
been a good king. He'd stolen the throne from his half-brother, and he often ignored the gods, especially. But to beware of a man with one sandal, the king laughed. This is a little bit confused, I am. It's all about Eras' revenge. Jason's quest wasn't fulfilled. And Jason and Media leave the country and never become king.